Good evening to everyone in the community and welcome. It is truly a privilege to be able to come before you today. I am Maria Hauser and just over two years ago, I joined the DeKalb team from Trotman Pepper Law Firm um, to manage the consent decree and the broader CIP program. Um, since my background is a combination of law, engineering and business. But we are here this evening to provide everyone in the community with information regarding what is being called the Soil Estates Improvement Project. So this project is significant because it's the second priority fix list project um, to be undertaken since the entry of the modified consent decree a few weeks ago. So I'm using a couple of words here. What do I mean by priority fix list? And what do I mean by the modified consent decree? Well, as you're going to hear during this presentation, the water and sewer infrastructure in DeKalb County, like other counties and cities throughout the US, has been neglected for decades. One of the symptoms of that neglect is sewer spills in the community, especially during wet weather. And in this community particularly, you have encountered several sewer spills. So a few weeks ago, um, in federal court, Judge Grimberg entered an agreement between the Department of Justice, the Environmental Protection Agency, the Georgia Attorney General's Office, and the Georgia Environmental Protection Division um, as to how DeKalb County will proceed in fixing its deteriorated sewer system. That agreement is what's known as the consent decree. In that document, 103 repeat sewer spill sites were identified before the court, and that included this location, Seoul States. DeCab under that agreement is required by the court, DOJ, EPA, EPD, to correct the deficiencies in the sewer system in your community within a two to four year window. So today we have a team of experts here to share information regarding the project and to answer your questions. And you can see the names of my colleagues and their areas of expertise on this slide. But before we get started with the history, the introduction to Department of Watership Management and the introduction to the project, I would like to introduce the chairperson of our Public Works and Infrastructure Committee, Commissioner Cochran Johnson, who is also your Super District 7 Commissioner. Commissioner Cochran Johnson? Yes, uh, thank you, Ms. Hauser. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to be present. And I also appreciate the opportunity to represent the residents of Sewell Estates. Um, as we're moving forward, as we expand, replace, and enlarge our infrastructure and water system throughout the cab, um, we want to keep you informed because what we're doing is absolutely necessary and it is creating a better DeKalb for us all. So, of course, I am here. We want to make sure that you're informed as we go through the process itself. Um, many of the SSOs, the sanitary sewer overflows that we've experienced in the area, the work that we are about to undertake will alleviate those. So bear with us as we experience growing pains because those will only be for a short period, but the benefits will help us grow and position us for economic development and strategic development within your community and throughout DeKalb. So thanks and feel free to reach out to my office if there's any questions, but we are totally here to assist you and make sure that you are enlightened throughout the process. And uh, Ms. Hauser, I will, of course, yield my time back to you. Thank you, Commissioner Cochran Johnson. Now we're gonna hear from the Chief of Staff of our presiding officer, Stephen Bradshaw, and he's also your District Four Commissioner, Chief of Staff, Ms. Alicia Brooks. Thank you, Maria. Good evening, everyone. And, and thank you all for taking the time out to join tonight to learn more about the uh, sewer improvement project. And on behalf of Commissioner Bradshaw, I wanna say greetings 
and also send his regrets that he was unable to join the call tonight due to a conflict. But as Commissioner Cochran Johnson said, I will not repeat it. This is going to, there will be growing pains, but when it's all said and done, this is for the betterment of the community and DeKalb County as a whole to get the sewer systems exactly where they need to be for economic development and for your own sake in terms of your own um, water usages. Uh, I am available to be reached uh, and my, I know my slide with contact information is gonna be uh, listed later on in the presentation. We are here, District 4, to be of service and help you. If you've got any questions, feel free to reach out to us as you normally would, either by email, phone call, and we'll be happy to follow through on any inquiries that you have regarding this, this project matter. Again, my name is Alicia Brooks. I represent uh, District 4 under the leadership of Commissioner Steve Bradshaw. Thank you. Well, now we would hear from our Chief Operating Officer, Mr. Zachary Williams about the history of our system and the great progress we're making such that it is a new day in DeKalb County. Zach? Uh, thank you, Ms. Hauser. I really appreciate the opportunity to come before everyone today um, and speak uh, about this project. And really, I want to start by acknowledging the tremendous leadership uh, provided by the team that's before you today, um, by the CEO, uh, by the Chair of the Public Works and Infrastructure Committee, uh, Ms. Lorraine Cochran Johnson, Super District 7, and by our presiding officer, uh, Steve Bradshaw, and you've heard from Alicia a moment ago. Uh, I am the Chief Operating Officer and responsible to both the CEO and to the Board of Commissioners for the daily operation of the government. So as such, all departments, divisions, and offices um, under the CEO I have uh, responsibility for oversight. And today I have the opportunity to talk a little bit about what we're doing in Watershed. And so next slide. What I'd like to specifically focus on is how we got here today. And DeKalb County, much like uh, the rest of the nation, quite frankly, has experienced uh, neglect in, uh, of investment in its infrastructure. Uh, DeKalb County, you see by the, the photographs, uh, has an aging sewer system, and, and historically we've had a lack of a capital improvement process. So when you look at these pipes that are uh, uh, clogged, essentially, um, they represent uh, really what our aging sewer system looks like. And as such, it is important that we are able to replace, uh, repair, or expand uh, our sewer system so that the Cab County can continue to prosper. Next slide. This is an example of the growth of DeKalb County. You see, we were formed in 1822. Fortunately, that's one thing we can say is we do not have any pipes in the ground from 1822. However, we do have um, a sewer system uh, that much of which uh, was beginning to be constructed shortly after World War I and after World War II as the county began to expand. As you look at the uh, chart, you see the indication around 1930 to 1940, DeKalb County began its, uh, its growth. And then after World War II, your 1940s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and into the 80s was uh, really a robust expansion, population growth in the county. Unfortunately, in DeKalb County, much like the rest of the nation, the underground infrastructure did not keep pace with the, the growth in the population. So what you have is what was demonstrated in the slide before, uh, a, an aged sewer system that is in desperate and dire need of repair. Beginning in uh, the 1980s, the best we can tell, uh, is that period we would call that period of neglect. Uh, from the 1980s to around 2010, was a period of which we, one would expect much of our sewer system to have been replaced. It was not. And so what happened is uh, Director Hauser mentioned, we entered into a consent decree, which is essentially a lawsuit that was filed against DeKalb County for its inability to maintain its sewer system in a way that presented, prevented sanitary sewer overflow. 
And that consent decree required uh, repair and replacement of our aged uh, sewer infrastructure. Unfortunately, for the first several years under the old consent decree, the county was really unable to get its traction. Uh, there's a host of reasons, but uh, in large part, it was uh, due to inability to select vendors timely uh, and proper oversight and management so that we could uh, repair and replace the pipes in a timely, uh, uh, in a time frame that was suitable to the consent decree. Next slide. In uh, 2017, uh, at the end of 2016, 2017, CEO Thurman was elected. Uh, and when CEO Thurman was elected, he wanted us to really uh, focus in on root causes of how did we get where we are today? How did DeKalb County end up with an aged uh, infrastructure, sewer spills that were essentially out of control, and a consent decree that, quite frankly, was not being implemented in a timely uh, manner? So what the CEO did uh, through his direct engagement is he pulled the, the team together uh, not only the members that you see on this phone call or on this Zoom call, but cross-departmental and made sure that we understood that addressing the issues identified in the consent decree were a top priority for DeKalb County. And they're a top priority not only uh, to address the environmental impacts um, caused by sanitary sewer overflows, but growth cannot happen without a sufficient sewer system. Economic development cannot happen without a sufficient sewer system. So the team really focused in through weekly meetings um, and identified and prioritized those areas that had repeat wet weather spill sites. Those were the most problematic uh, sanitary sewer overflows that we really needed to focus on and address in order to move forward in our consent decree efforts. And that has been done and is being done. We focused on identifying the root cause and the underlying symptoms uh, of our sanitary sewer system. So in today's conversation, we're going to have an opportunity to have our professionals from the Department of Watershed Management explain to everyone as to how our focus on these repeat weather, uh, repeat wet weather spill sites um, and focusing in on addressing the issues, as Ms. Hauser indicated in the uh, renewed consent decree, will allow us to uh, address sanitary sewer overflows and have expansion in our future as opposed to stagnation. With that being said, I'd like to uh, turn over to uh, the director or interim director of watershed management, Mr. David Hayes, who will walk us through the Department of Watershed and then his staff will take us through this project specifically. Mr. Hayes. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Good evening. As Mr. Williams said, my name is David Hayes and I'm the newly appointed director, interim director of watershed management. And I'd like to tell you a little bit about the functions of the Department of Watershed Management. We're, we are allowed to take as much as 128 million gallons per day of water from the Chattahoochee River to treat for drinking. We currently average about 70 million gallons of drinking water per day that we send out to the homes and res the uh, businesses of DeKalb County. We have the ability to receive back about 56 billion gallons per day of sewer water from the homes and businesses that we treat at two of our wastewater facilities. All water and sewer is conveyed using DeKalb County's 5,000 miles of water and sewer pipe that's in the ground around and throughout DeKalb County. If you were to extend that pipe from end to end, that's enough pipe to extend from Georgia to the coast of California and back. Most homes and businesses are connected to the DeKalb County system with a pipe that is referred to as a lateral. On the DeKalb County side of the connection is a gravity of the gravity sewer is um, another pipe 
that conveys that gravity sewer to the treatment facilities. This allows the, the sewer to flow under gravity power to the wastewater treatment plants. Older laterals may crack, they may break. Um, there are some that have missing caps. There could be illicit rain gutter connections to the system, uh, root intrusion. We have issues with fats, oils, and grease buildup. Or they, the pipe themselves may be damaged from contractors or construction. These issues allow unwanted rainwater to enter to the DeKalb County sewer system, thereby taking up much of the needed capacity. It also allows breakages that prevent the flow of sewer. And these blockages and capacity issues are what we're trying to address today with this project. Again, why is the cat replacing or repairing this sewer line? The engineering department is, is leading the effort to repair and or replace the county's aging infrastructure. These repairs will reduce sewer overflow and improve customer service that will yield an upgraded system that will allow future development and growth for the entire DeKalb. So our team, through the direction of the CEO, we've dedicated a full team for this project to include every needed resource from not just Watershed, but all other DeKalb County departments as well. That includes also several industry leading engineering firms and construction firms who will all be led by Watershed's engineering department. This will allow a timely, safe and successful project. From there, I'd like to introduce you to our Compliance Assistant Director, Mr. Brent Zern, who's going to tell you how we assess the situation. Mr. Zern. Thank you, Director Hayes. Uh, and hello, everyone. So glad you could join us tonight. Um, as the director stated, my name is Brent Zern. Uh, I'm the Assistant Director over Compliance and uh, the Consent Decree Programs. Um, that are officially uh, under uh, Ms. Hauser, who spoke earlier. Uh, what that means for this project is that I manage all of our very talented and dedicated professionals that are the first line of defense uh, in protecting DeKalb's environmental and infrastructure interests. Um, this involves assessing, excuse me, assessing our pinch points in the sewer system so we know what we're dealing with and where. Um, so essentially helping to prevent future overflows begins with us. Uh, on the next slide, I'll discuss what strategies we use for assessing our problem areas and how that information is used to start formulating important engineering decisions. So uh, I have to state that the upstream area to several states was not in a priority fix area, although we know that civil estates is, as you heard. Uh, that means that a comprehensive assessment of all areas affecting this project needs to happen in both priority and non-priority areas before a fix can be determined. However, I do want to point out that every strategy and technology that you see on this slide has or will be used to ensure the most complete and accurate data can be handed off to the engineering team to determine the most sound and cost-effective solution. So this means that the low-hanging fruit strategies, such as smoke testing, uh, acoustic evaluation, uh, and manhole lid inspections, have been completed upstream. Um, to complement this, 16,000 linear feet of pipe has been identified for CCTV, but has not yet been performed, but will be. Um, to help you understand these actions, uh, just let me give you a quick description. Um, smoke testing is a quick and cost-effective exercise that helps us determine if there could be a broken pipe and or infiltration of stormwater, which can limit sewer capacity. 
Um, and today, 80 clean out cats have been identified to be replaced, which will eliminate this infiltration and increase our capacity, as I mentioned. Also, 27 vented manhole lids. Um, and to define that, those are the ones with holes in them have been identified for replacement with solid lids that will further reduce infiltration as well as odor issues. Um, CCTV or um, otherwise known as closed circuit TV is another standard tool we use and gives us great in the pipe data of the pipe's true condition. Um, so a very important technology that we use frequently. Hydraulic modeling is performed by using flow monitoring data directly from the manholes and this modeling, along with everything else discussed, leads the assessment team to develop fixed recommendations for the engineering team who determine, excuse me, who determine final solutions. Um, so to discuss the engineering design phase that follows the assessment I just described, uh, I want to introduce you to Mr. Kerry Williams. Good evening, I am Kerry Williams. I am the engineer manager for the Cab County Watershed, and I'm also a professionally licensed civil engineer. I am supported by a team of 13 engineers, six which are, li are licensed, and 17 GIS technicians. We are also supported by four nationally, nationally known consulting engineering firms. So what is the problem? Well, the Solar State area has experienced 17 sanitary sewer overflows since 2013. Three that were classified as overflows and 14 classified as spills. And that total accounted for a total spill of sewage into our waterways of 14,332 gallons into our waterways. The latest, the latest and greatest spill occurred on October 24, 2020. So what causes, what are, what are the causes of this thing? If, as you heard earlier, you heard uh, Chief Operations Officer Williams as he spoke about the aged infrastructure. The infrastructure in this area was installed around the 1950s. So that gives it an age of roughly 70 plus years in age. And with age, pipes collect debris and stuff and what used to be an eight inch opening, maybe a four inch opening or whatever. We also have a lack of capacity. What used to serve four homes now has to serve 400 homes. The pipes were not designed for that. So we have capacity issues. We also have operational inefficiencies in our system. We have pipes that, supposed to, that should flow downhill, but they are what we call reverse slope and the pipe slopes the other way. We also have cracked pipes that due to age, uh, load on them. And we also, and with that being said, the solar states area has been added to the priority fix list as you heard Ms. Hauser speak earlier. You, later on in the uh, program, you will hear from the project manager, Ms. Sean Prescott, who will tell you more about the scope of this project. But now I'm going to turn it over to the program administrator, Ms. Cassandra Marshall, that she can tell you about the solution to these problems. Thank you, Carrie. Good evening. My name is Cassandra Marshall. I am the CIP program administrator for watershed management. So to this point of the presentation, you've heard about the problem. I will speak to the solution. You may ask yourself, what does CIP stand for? Well, CIP or Capital Improvement Project is a project that helps maintain or improve an asset. It can either be new construction, an expansion, renovation, or replacement of an existing infrastructure. So earlier this year, the Board of Commissioners approved a new CIP program for $2.4 billion for projects to be completed from 2021 to 2030. The department is grateful to the Board of Commissioners for the approval of the CIP plan. The Solar State Sewer Improvement Project is a $4.1 million project that is included within that plan. My team, the CIP team, is responsible for getting that work done. My team includes four DWM construction managers and 12 licensed inspectors. 
Later in the presentation, you will also hear from the DWM construction manager for this project, Mr. Ari Kennedy, who is a licensed utility manager. Along with in-house staff, we are supported by consultant firms who help assist the county with construction management and inspection services. So what we want you to know, we're here to help. We wanna reduce or eliminate emergency repairs. We wanna stop the spills. We wanna protect the environment. And finally, after the project is complete, it will improve sustainability to the system. These improvements should last for a minimum of 70 plus years. Next, you will hear from the project manager, Ms. Shauna Prescott, who will speak about the project scope. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us tonight. My name is Shauna Prescott. I'm the project manager for Souls Estates Realignment Project. This evening, I will be providing you with a scope overview for this project. Tier one assessment, like Brent had talked about, the acoustic, the smoke, the manhole assessment condition began in March of 2019. From 2019 to December of 2020, we have completed the survey and assessment work, reviewed all ecological impacts to the area, completed the proposed design and permitting for this project. Fall 2021, we will start the project preparation by engaging the public. Construction will begin and once installation is accomplished, restoration will commence. Solar Estates project scope overview, plan work includes upsizing approximately 4,480 linear feet of sewer, replace exist the existing 15 to 18 inch sewer line with the new 24 inch pipe. Jack and bore construction for approximately 340 linear feet. Open cut construction of approximately 4,140 linear feet and installing 27 new manholes. We have worked dil diligently with each property owner affected by the new sewer alignment for this project. DWM has procured the easements and stipulations associated with the installation of the new sewer line. The map before you shows you the impacted parcels associated with the realignment. This shows you the location of the Jack and Boar um, going underneath Idlewood Road. Methods of construction. We have two types of method of construction, one being a jack and bore, which is a trenchless method of sewer construction. You have two pits, one a receiving, one is a launch pit. Uh, you'll place the, the jack and bore machine in the launch pit and send it to the receiving pit while it's boring a hole underneath the ground horizontally um, without disturbing the surface above. Open cut construction, traditional method of sewer construction for repair or replacement. It's the most economical method of construction to achieve the county's desired results for gra uh, gravity sewer. It provides the, provides the best service suited for the scope of work. The duration of the project, the project staking has begun Easement clearing will start October 25th and continue throughout the life of the project. Construction access preparation will start around October 27th. Construct, construction will commence on or around January the 3rd in the first quarter of 2022, working from the downstream area beginning at Silver Oaks apartment and Camelot Court area, continuing upstream to a final tie-in of the project. Some work activities will continue through spring of 2023. And of course, all these dates are dependent on weather and site conditions. Resident impact, the Silver Oak apartment, air uh, residents in building, air, 
34 F and E and building 28 A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H may be subject to noise and visual impact produced during construction. No anticipated traffic disruptions such as lane closures to Idlewood Road. Residents may encounter some traffic construction traffic entering and exiting Idleville Road throughout the life of this project. Now I'll turn it over to our construction project manager, Mr. Ari Kennedy. Thank you, Shauna, and good evening to everyone. My name is Ari M. Kennedy and I'm the DWM construction project manager. And as Ms. Marshall stated earlier, I'm a licensed utility manager with over roughly 10 million linear feet of pipe in the ground under my belt. Next slide, please. My team and I are, are boots on the ground and we're responsible for all of the construction activity, which includes, but not limited to clearing within the permanent and the temporary easement, ensuring that all erosion and sedimentation controls are in place and ensuring uh, proper installation of the pipe is in place according to the, uh, the specs, the contract drawings, and enforcing all safety measures that follows. Next. My team and I, which consists of construction inspectors and consulting construction inspectors and contract managers, will be responsible again for the day-to-day -day operation and also at the end of the day, ensuring that the site is secure and all holes are backfilled and safed up for the evening. We will also ensure as the picture de de depicts on the left that all restoration will be done and completed as to the picture on the right, in kind and or better. And with that, I'll turn it back over to Ms. Cassandra Marshall. Thank you, Ari. I will now address the community concerns. So what to expect? Unfortunately, what comes with construction are inconveniences in which we plan to try to minimize. Uh, what you're going to see is a lot of construction traffic, foot and vehicles. Um, there will be a lot of construction workers, surveyors, county employees throughout your community. What also come with this is the parking for the crew workers. Um, they will be parked alongside the streets in your neighborhoods and sometimes along the work zone. There will be material and equipment deliveries by means of large tractor trailers. The crews and the flaggers will guide these large vehicles in and out of the communities. And as an FYI, all of the county contractors and county employees will have an identification badge. There's going to be noise. The equipment has backup alarms. The alarms have to be loud enough for the people in the work zone to hear. This is a safety mechanism. As one of the measure of noise reduction, we will not allow the contractor to, to let the equipment run idle. Um, there will be bypass pumps. Bypass pumps will generate noise also. This photo is an actual photo of a bypass pump system set up. The good news for this project is there will not be continuous bypass pumping since most of the project is relocation of the existing sewer. This will allow for the existing sewer to naturally flow and bypass will only will be required when we have to tie in spur lines. Sediments on the street. As an erosion control measure, the contractor will first install a construction entrance and exit prior to starting construction activities. This will reduce tracking of mud on the streets, but not fully eliminate the issue. If mud is tracked on the streets, the contractor will be responsible for keeping the streets clean and swept daily. Work hours. Our work hours will vary based on the location of where the crews are working. But our typical work hours are from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., sometime weekends and sometime holidays. And lastly, there will be clear delineation of the work zone. This is usually just shown by installing silt fence along the temporary or permanent easement and along the ingress, egress areas. Next slide. Next, you will hear from the public relations manager. Ms. Alicia Penny. Good evening, everyone. My name is Alicia Penny. 
and I'm the public relations manager responsible for communications and outreach for the department. Tonight, I will share with you the methods DWM will utilize to communicate with you about this project. But before I do that, I want to briefly recap what has occurred so far within the community. Our outreach team has engaged with residents in high impact areas and worked alongside our construction and engineering team to obtain right of entry access to properties as needed. Leading up to tonight's meeting, you received a notification letter describing the details of the project and informing you of tonight's meeting. Going forward, 48 to 72 hours before the beginning of construction, each homeowner will receive a door hanger like the one shown here, which will tell you that the hours of work and what to expect during construction. We will also use the Gov Delivery eBlast notification service to communicate with you. And so at this time, if you've not done so already, please take a moment to provide your email address in the chat so that we can communicate with you throughout this project and use this information for, for future reference. Shown here are the touch points we will use to communicate. First, we have a dedicated project hotline, which includes a 1-800 number and email address. Uh, we also have a de dedicated web page for the project, which has tonight's presentation posted there, as well as some other important project information. We will use our social media platforms, Twitter and Facebook, to share updates on the project. We will also use news releases as well as the county's weekly newsletter entitled The Relay to share important information or updates about the project. Other ways we will connect with you, DCTV, which is DeKalb County Television. We will use the Nextdoor platform, which is how some of you may have learned about the meeting tonight. We will use project signs, which will be posted in the upcoming weeks. They will be in prominent areas connected to the project. And our frequently asked bar posted actually to the website. And there uh, we have answered what we believe to be some of the critical questions that you have about the project. Some of, uh, most of that information has been shared tonight. And we will update that throughout the project as we get more um, questions from residents. Contact information is listed here. Here you will find key information for the project. Um, once again, project hotline and email address. More importantly, we have a listing of the engineering and construction team for this project. If you notice, the last person listed is Miss Alicia Brooks, who is the chief of staff for District 4. She asked that we also provide her information as well. So that information is here. And finally, we have our 24-hour dispatch number. If an emergency arises outside of normal business hours, we ask that you please use this 24-hour number. And with that, this concludes our presentation. 